Hi, I'm Avery Davidson. And I'm Kristen Oaks White. Thank you for joining us for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. Well, there are nearly 700,000 public school students in Louisiana. That's according to the Louisiana Department of Education. Not all students have an opportunity to learn about agriculture as part of their classes. However, at one middle school in Evangeline Parish, farm life is front and center. School is in session at Richard and Rhonda Fontenot's farm in Evangeline Parish. The classroom for these middle school students is the tractor shed. And while Rhonda is a school teacher, on this day, it's Richard leading the lecture on some of the crops he grows, rice and soybeans. And if you look at the roots on a soybean, soybeans are legume. If you look at the roots, they're kind of, we call them more of a tap root, main kind of root system, versus what we have in rice is more of a grass or fibrous root system. And can y'all see the difference? Not only can they see the difference, but they could smell it too when Richard introduces them to Louisiana grown aromatic jasmine rice. It smells like, it, like corn chips. Like corn chips? These students from Evangeline Reimagine Academy are getting used to these kinds of hands on Smell it. and nose on experiences. That's because Evangeline Reimagine Academy is a different kind of middle school. We want kids to see and experience things that they have never experienced before. Liz Shatlin is the Evangeline Parish Reimagine Grant Coordinator. After 18 years of teaching middle school, she took on the task of reimagining the middle school experience for students who traditionally missed school or had academic challenges. We know we need to teach them how to read and write and do math, right? They absolutely need that, but we, we're leaving out such an important part of their education so many opportunities to, to teach them uh, about life. So these kids are going to know what it's like in middle school to run a small business. Students at Evangeline Reimagine Academy are placed into learning zones, one of which is agriculture. Giving them those hands-on experiences is so very important because it really makes the learning real for them. Uh, it, it's not, no longer um, a concept. Uh, now it becomes a, a, a reality. They get to put in practice those things that they have read about, those things that they've heard about, those things that they have learned from their teachers. I had one particular kid, he, he told me and shared with me that he has a, a grandfather that's a farmer. And so he's really invested and he talks about, oh, maybe that's not how you do that or this is how you do that. So I appreciate that they have that, uh, those opportunities that um, they normally wouldn't have in a traditional school setting. Back at the Fontenot's farm, Richard looks out on these middle schoolers thinking about how this reimagined learning could shape their futures. They might be our NRCS staff one day. They might work with FSA. They might work with the Ag Center. They might work through Extension, Youth Development. Anytime we can excite kids about agriculture at any level in any form, it could be farm to table type stuff. That, that they start a, a truck farm on the weekends and do. So the, the, the opportunity is endless, and if we can get these kids excited that aren't traditionally exposed to agriculture and get them into our family, we're just a stronger family at the end. The Evangeline Reimagine Academy is really, really innovative. If you would like to learn more about the school, visit our website at twilighttv.org or look for the link under this story on YouTube. And Kristen, it was really cool going there because this is a chance for folks to reimagine a school from the ground up. And like in the hallways, they have little couches to try and make it more homey, a more relaxed environment. Uh, some of the other zones they have, learning zones they have, focus on communication. So I'm going to go back over there and talk to them a little bit about that. But having agriculture as one of those zones that you can make the focus of your middle school education, I think that's really, really neat and really sets these kids uh, ahead to, to choose what career they want to go into. Do you think your kids, if you had the opportunity to send them to a school like this, would they enjoy so, it? So I think Logan would absolutely love it. He'd be all about it. I think Luke would try to take the school over. <laughs> and if, because if you give him a little bit of leeway, suddenly, I don't care what zone you put him in, it's going to be about bugs and snakes. Bugs and snakes the whole way. Part so, of agriculture. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, sometimes heading out to the farm for a tour is not an option. That's where the Louisiana Ag in the Classroom program comes in. This week, Twyla's Carl Wiggers takes us to a workshop in Sabine Parish where teachers are getting new tools to bring the wide world of agriculture into their classrooms. 
Sometimes the life of a teacher looks a lot like their students. Today they have some after school learning to do at this Ag in the Classroom workshop in Sabine Parish. Paul Morris is the president of Sabine Parish Farm Bureau and he is excited to host this event for the ultimate benefit of the children in his community. There are a lot of influences out there in the world and from cartoon shows to comic books to uh, social media that uh, tend to tear down agriculture and they need to know the other side of the story. Stephanie Maines is the Ag in the Classroom Chair for Sabine Parish. This was her first workshop to help host and wanted it to be special for the teachers attending. We wanted to make it really fantastic. We wanted it to stand out. We wanted it to be exciting so that the teachers would be excited, ready to take it back to the classroom. The results are in and Maine's accomplished that goal. Elementary school teachers like Emily and Galen say this workshop was unlike any other. Often when we go to workshops for different things, it's like you're going to have to prepare all these resources. But even the PowerPoints are created, even games that your kids can do for fun stuff and, and hands-on activities, um, the standards are already listed on there. So it's like everything's done for you. You just have to kind of find time in your day to make it meaningful for the kids so that they can get something from that. I think that it's wonderful that we have an organization like Farm Bureau that supports agriculture and that provides the resources for educators, that support educators, and gives us the tools to bring forth because some of us have not been raised um, or have the privilege to be raised in agriculture. So to have an educator that has been given the tools like Farm Bureau has given us through the Ag in the Classroom um, program, um, where would we be? We wouldn't have those opportunities, and so it's very valuable. Now there is still time to attend a couple of the final workshops in South Louisiana. We'll have a link to register for those and a wealth of other resources from Ag in the Classroom on our website at twilatv.org. Well, you know, we've also been having class right here on Twyla lately in our new segment, Label Lessons. Yep, what great teachers, right? Well, we've been talking all things rice to celebrate National Rice Month. This week, LSU Ag Center dietitian Jennifer Duhon shows us what to look for in a nutrition label on a bag of rice next time you go to the grocery store. Now we all know that households may have a preference on what brand of rice you choose, but we want you to know when it comes to nutrition, you're going to be getting the same when we're comparing long grain rice in a different brand to another, that same long grain rice. With long grain rice, we're looking at about 160 calories per serving. Now a serving of rice is gonna be 1 4 cup dry, which actually equates to 3 4 cup cooked. So you're getting a pretty substantial amount or a great serving when it comes to the nutrition profile that you'll get. You're also looking at about 36 grams of carbohydrates and three grams of protein. Now again, in comparing something like brown rice, we're gonna have a little bit different nutrient profile. This one will have about 170 calories, but we're also gonna increase the fiber, which is going to cause that little bit of increase in calories. But again, great nutrition and a great bang for your buck. If you have a label that you don't quite understand or a burning question about one of these issues you see here behind us, let us know about it on our website, twilatv.org. We'd love to feature those questions on an upcoming segment. Well, one of the great conservation success stories is the symbol of freedom that strikes patriotism into the hearts of many, the American bald eagle. Believe it or not, a big part of that success happens right here in Louisiana. As Twilight's Neil Melanson shows us, LSU veterinarians are helping restore this majestic animal back into the wild. Fall is usually when students are coming onto campus, but here at the LSU Vet School, one resident is leaving. This eagle was found injured on the side of the road by Department of Wildlife and Forestry agents and has spent a few months rehabilitating here at the Raptor Clinic. We determined that he had an old gunshot injury to his wing um, with the bullet still lodged inside of his um, body wall. We were able to treat him with rehydration and giving him some pain meds to help support the injuries that he had. And then we also just gave him a lot of time to kind of just heal those injuries on his own because um, they were already in the process of trying to heal on their own um, and gave him a lot of time out in our flight cages so that he could re rehabilitate and exercise himself. The eagle was found and released near the sugarcane field in Lafouche Parish. Releasing them near where they're found is an important part of the rehabilitation process. Today when he flew off, he did exactly what we were expecting him to do. He 
um, went over to a tree just to kind of assess the situation because it was a new area. And then once he decided he was ready to go, he flew off beautifully. Um, and that's exactly what we want to see. These students are future veterinarians and caring for these birds is not just a compassionate act, but a learning experience. Third year vet school student Mariella Cohen says they have to learn about these animals in the clinic and the field. One of the wildlife doctors at the veterinary hospital always emphasizes that in order to be able to release them, they have to fly a certain way and that involves them being able to lift up, halt in the air and then drop down onto a perch, which was something new for us that we got to learn and observe and kind of watch his progress over time as he got better with that. If you find an injured raptor, the best bet is to call the professionals to pick it up. If one isn't available, Dr. Boykin says it's important to protect yourself and the bird. If you have any kind of net or large blanket or towel and gloves, um, that is the next best way to try to get them. Um, so, but really just making sure that you are watching out for those talons on their feet is the biggest thing and just making sure that they can't grab you. Um, and then other than that, just making sure they don't injure themselves in the process. As for this eagle, the physical release of the bird is matched by the emotional release by those who cared for him. It's always very rewarding to see them get back out into the wild. Um, not every bird gets to this point, so it's very special for us to be able to work with these animals and see them actually re-enter their, their environment and thrive in their environment. So we get to see them moving and kind of regaining their strength in the flight cage, which is also awesome. And it is an awesome sight to see. Reporting from Lafouche Parish, I'm Yoma Lawson. The Raptor Clinic has permanent residents that are used for educational purposes for both vet students and classrooms. However, they are dependent on donations to care for these birds. To donate or find out more, head on over to our website at twilatv.org. While the federal government is releasing funds that could help Louisiana battle wildfires in the future. Those funds come from the Inflation Reduction Act Congress passed last year. USDA Undersecretary for Natural Resources and Environment Dr. Homer Wilkes spoke to the National Association of state foresters at the group's annual meeting in Baton Rouge. With the recent wildfires across the state, Wilkes focused a good portion of his speech on the Community Wildfire Defense Program, which is funded by the IRA. So that's why it's so important that people participate in these Community Wildfire Defense Grants, because that's an opportunity to do Community Wildfire Protection Plans. And I think if you plan those areas, and you, you'd be more adept to if something was to take place. So. Those are the types of things that I see that we can do in order to improve on that. But Louisiana has done a good job uh, as far as the containment of those fires. If you would like to learn more about the Community Wildfire Defense Grant Program, visit our website at twilatv.org. Louisiana is well represented at the 12th Annual Women in Agribusiness Summit in Nashville, Tennessee. Louisiana Farm Bureau Livestock Advisory Chair Amelia Kent spoke on a producer's panel during the event. And Louisiana's own Tammy Arinder caught up with her while she was there. So many of these women have come here to listen to other women producers and those in, in the agribusiness sector. And I have with me Amelia Kent, and she and her husband own Kent Farms in South Louisiana, in Clint, Louisiana, just outside of Baton Rouge. And Amelia, you have been such an advocate for agriculture and especially for the cattle industry. Let's talk a little bit about you and what you're going to tell the folks here as part of the female producer panel. It's been challenging for sure. We've been expanding our cattle numbers in a contracting market and that's stressful and it's challenging and it's, I mean, it's a stretch, but we're doing it, we've done it and now we've, we've gotten to the goal in terms of our scale um, and we're finally at the point in the market cycle where things are starting to feel good too. Um, we're, we're proud of all of the sweat and the effort and the trials and tribulations, it feels a lot like two steps forward and three steps backwards, but we're really pleased with where we're positioned now relative to our numbers and the market cycle. Do you think it's tougher for a woman in your position to be able, you know, to get things done in the cattle industry? Is it any tougher for you? More than a gender issue, I think that um, the integrity and the I guess fortitude of the character, it builds into those personality traits to be able to handle whatever is thrown at you on a daily basis, whether it's in a staffing role or um, boots on the ground on the farm. What do you hope the women listening in on your panel walk away with? Speak up, break the stereotypes, don't worry about what others think. At the end of the day, you have to walk a walk that you're proud of. Yeah, Amelia, 
quite a role model you are. And you know, it's interesting that uh, the numbers are on their way up as far as women being involved in agriculture. And of the 1.2 million producers, the women that are holding major roles on the farm, the most are in the beef cattle industry. I'm Tammy Arinder at the Women in Agribusiness Summit for this week in Louisiana Agriculture. Thanks, Tammy. Still to come on Twyla, what does Taylor Swift, football, and farming have in common? We'll connect the dots and your internet connection in the Twyla Boost. You say so. But first, we have updates on work happening in Congress to help farmers and ranchers in Louisiana facing unprecedented drought. Stay with us. Louisiana has had an unprecedented number of 100 degree days this summer, and it's taking a toll on ranchers across the state. LSU Ag Center reporter Craig Gotro takes us to central Louisiana to show us what this heat stress does to cattle. This summer has been a tough one for cattle producers across Louisiana. Fields of forage are lacking, hay cuttings are running behind, and cattle have been shedding pounds because of the hot, dry summer. We're seeing weight losses, uh, especially so that impacts all aspects of performance for our cattle. Um, also having to try to find feed, um, find feed and find hay, not just for right now, but looking forward into the winter months as well. Both hay quantity and quality are down this year, which may lead to further weight losses during the winter. With highs likely to stay in the 90s for much of September, it is important to reduce the stress on cattle now. Shade and water um, are the two easiest things to go ahead and, and think about. If you don't have natural shade, you can implement artificial shade structures if needed, uh, making sure they have water. If the water sources can be in the shade, that's even better. Some ranchers are having to sell their cattle early, and because the cattle are lighter, it is affecting the bottom line of producers. So selling them a little bit earlier means that they have less pounds to market. It means that they're going to make a little bit lower uh, profit. Hopefully they're still profitable this year, but they're not going to be bringing in quite as big of a paycheck. While there are plenty of dark clouds, there is one small silver lining for producers. I guess the good thing right now is prices have been higher. Um, so if you are having to sell, at least price per pound is a little bit better than it has been in the past. Edwards cautioned that producers should have their hay check for nutritional value to determine what nutrients may need to be supplemented. With the LSU Ag Center, this is Craig Gotro reporting. Cattle producers throughout the southeast should be making arrangements for hay deliveries now to get them through the winter months. That's because demand is expected to be very high. Well, Louisiana farmers and ranchers may soon have some extra help in times of drought, thanks to a bill filed by Louisiana 5th District Congresswoman Julia Letlow. And she's also working to protect a Louisiana tradition, the spring crawfish boils. The bill, H.R. 5691, is called the Drought Assistance Improvement Act. Louisiana Farm Bureau was very involved in the crafting of this bill. Here's what the Drought Assistance Improvement Act would change in the next farm bill. Currently, ranchers only receive payments through the Livestock Forage Disaster program if their pastures are in severe drought, a D2 on the drought monitor, for eight consecutive weeks. And that payment is only for one month. Letlow's bill would change that to only four consecutive weeks of severe drought to trigger that one month payment. It makes sense. One month of drought equals one month of payment. Now for the part that's going to help keep crawfish available. The Drought Assistance Improvement Act would add protection for crawfish under the Emergency Assistance for Livestock, Honeybees, and Farm-Raised Fish program. Currently, if crawfish farmers lose their crawfish to drought, they're out of luck. H.R. 5691 would provide payments to crawfish farmers through ELAP when they suffer losses due to drought. Congresswoman Letlow says her bill is the first step in addressing shortcomings under the current farm bill. We faced some incredible drought uh, numbers this year, and it really hurt our farmers and producers. I heard from so many of them um, just during those really difficult months uh, that we had to endure in Louisiana. And so, you know, we really thought, how can we put our heads together and try to improve a program that seems to not be fulfilling its promise to our producers and farmers? And how can we expedite a process that seems to be lagging? And so we brought forth this Drought Assistance Improvement Act. Louisiana Farm Bureau President Jim Harper says the state's largest general farm organization stands behind the Drought Assistance Improvement Act and asks Congress to pass it as representatives and senators work on the 2023 Farm Bill. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association also supports Letlow's bill. Still to come on Twyla, the Swifty effect on the farm. Stay with us.
What do Taylor Swift, football, and agriculture have in common? That's exactly what we're going to show you in this week's Twyla Boost. So, are you ready for it? I just can't even with you. <laughs> if you are a Swifty sports fan or honestly anyone with access to the internet or not even internet, just a TV, you are likely aware of the media frenzy surrounding pop superstar Taylor Swift and two-time Super Bowl champion Travis Kelsey. And if you're not, here's a quick little overview. Kelsey discussed having a crush on Taylor and wanting to give Swift his phone number before her concert at Arrowhead Stadium back in July, but never got the chance. Fast forward to earlier this week where Taylor Swift was seen accompanying Kelsey's mother at one of his games. And while there are still some questions on what that appearance means, there is no doubt that this new era is gaining yards. Swifties are learning football, the NFL is using Swift quotes, and it's all anyone in the whole wide world is talking about, including, including us, us. now. Yeah. Including <laughs> us. So you're officially up to speed. Okay, I'm still wondering though, how this has anything to do with this TV show or agriculture. Here we go. While Travis Kelsey has gained media attention recently due to his Taylor Swift relations, it isn't his only claim to fame. Travis Kelsey is a two-time Super Bowl champion. We already said that. His brother Jason is also an NFL superstar himself. The duo gained a lot of attention earlier this year when they became the first brothers to play against each other in a Super Bowl. Amazon recently released a documentary called Kelsey, which captures that epic year in their life, but it also reveals one of Jason's surprising off-season interests, ranching. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. And if farming and pro football were not enough, he also co-hosts the most popular sports podcast on Spotify, New Heights. Ah, who knew? Well, now you know. And we are really happy to see that he is using that platform to bring some of his agricultural knowledge to more than a million listeners. Let's talk about some cow updates. Hey, yo. Jason got out of the house and made his way to Missouri. What'd you do with these cows, man? How many do you have right now? I got 18 cows, not including the calves we had last year and the calves we've had this year. Because? They're not cows yet. Oh, all right. So a cow is a female offspring producing animal. Heifer is a female that hasn't calved yet. All of these are too young to have calved, so they're still calves. A heifer? Heifer is a female that has not calved. Cow is a female cow. It's just part of being a cowboy. I should have been a cowboy. Should have learned to roll the rain. Yeah, the herd is quickly getting a lot bigger. Where my six feet? Like you running on a cattle drive. Feeling young girls' hearts. Just like Gene and Roy. Singing, singing those campfire songs. Oh, I should have been a cowboy. So shocked you know that song. I know this is going to come as no surprise to you, Kristen. Not exactly a Swifty. So Shocker. I, I, yeah, I really got an education here. I feel like I just ran a marathon to give it to you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, that does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when we hand over the anchor desk to the state officers of Louisiana 4-H for National 4-H Week. And we'll run a marathon. But until then, you can watch all of our stories online at twylatv.org. And be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find all of these stories and more on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe, like, turn on those notifications. That way you know when we put something new out. For all of us here at Twyla, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week.